From the Tribune News Network, this is Newsbreak. I'm Krishna Russell. Monique Pindling, the daughter of former Prime Minister Sir Lyndon Pindling, said the Progressive Liberal Party's leadership told her she would not receive a nomination because the PLP does not want a Pindling on the ticket. She made her comment during an appearance on the 96.9 FM talk show, The Revolution. She said, quote, they alluded to something about negativity of my dad and didn't want it to be the focus and things like that. Ms. Pindling ended her bid to secure the PLP's nomination in Central and South Andrus last summer after party officials made it clear that she would not get that nomination. She said her mother, former Governor General Marguerite Pindling, was at the meeting when the PLP's leadership told her that a Pindling would not be on the ticket. She did not specify which PLP leader she met with. Although current Central and South Andrus Representative Picewell Forbes said on Monday he would no longer seek the party's nomination, Ms. Pindling made it clear she does not expect to be the party's standard bearer in that constituency. The co-owners of an Abaco lounge were ticketed $30,500 for breaking COVID-19 emergency powers orders by having nearly 100 people crammed into a space only meant to hold 24. The news of the citation was released by police after a video was circulated on social media showing dozens of people pouring out of Chubb's Kitchen, a restaurant and lounge. The video showed men and women, many with drinks in hand, leaving the lounge while being ordered by police to put their masks on. The individuals were not practicing social distancing and many either were not wearing masks or had them pulled down on their chins. There were 95 people in the space, police have said. Tourism Minister Dionisio de Aguilar said yesterday he is hopeful things will improve for the country's tourism industry during the course of the year as vaccination campaigns against COVID-19 continue to be rolled out worldwide. On Monday, Bahamar confirmed it has made another 100 staff members redundant as it prepares to open its high-end Rosewood and SLS resort properties. Yesterday, the tourism minister said the move further exposes some of the challenges faced by the hotel industry as a result of the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic, which continues continues to impact travel internationally, therefore resulting in low occupancy levels. However, he said while some Bahama workers will no longer be called back to work, others will be re-engaged with the reopening of the SLS and the Rosewood. Former Prime Minister Hubert Ingram was discharged from Doctors Hospital yesterday. His doctor, former Health Minister Dr. Dwayne Sands, said he has made great progress. Mr. Ingram was admitted to hospital last week Tuesday with COVID-19. Mr. Ingram led the Free National Movement to an historic general election victory in 1992 and followed that up with victories in 1997 and 2007. He told a local daily last week that both he and his wife tested positive for the virus. Your complete news and information source, this is In International News. Besieged by sexual harassment allegations, a somber New York governor, Andrew Cuomo, apologized today, saying he learned an important lesson about his own behavior around women, but he said he intended to remain in office. I now understand that I acted in a way that made people feel uncomfortable, Cuomo said at a Wednesday press conference. It was unintentional and I truly and deeply apologize for it. Cuomo said he will fully cooperate with the state attorney general's investigation into sexual harassment allegations. Slow off the blocks in the race to immunize its citizens against COVID-19. Germany faces an unfamiliar problem, a glut of vaccines and not enough arms to inject them into. Like other countries in the European Union, its national vaccine campaign lags far behind that of Israel, Britain and the United States. Now, there are growing calls in the country of 83 million to ditch the rule book or at least rewrite it a bit. The Tribune's AccuWeather update a service of Bahamas Power and Light Company. High pressure across the Bahamas will begin to retreat eastward ahead of a cold front that enters the extreme northwestern islands tonight. Beachgoers should remain vigilant due to the risk of rip currents along east and south coast beaches. In the northwest Bahamas, it'll be partly sunny, warm and breezy, with increasing cloudiness, showers and thunderstorm activity in the extreme northwest Bahamas this evening. Partly cloudy with isolated showers elsewhere. Small craft caution is in effect. Winds south to southwest at 15 to 20 knots, but becoming southwest to west in the extreme northwest Bahamas tonight. Seas 4 to 6 feet over the ocean. In the central and southeast Bahamas, it'll be partly sunny, hot, and breezy, with a quick passing shower, becoming partly cloudy with isolated showers tonight. Small crafts should exercise caution. Winds southeasterly at 15 to 20 knots. Seas 4 to 6 feet over the ocean. We'll have a daytime high temperature of 84 degrees and an overnight low temperature of 66. The sun will set this afternoon at 6.11 and will rise tomorrow morning at 6.30. 
That's Newsbreak. Details of the day's top stories in the Tribune newspaper. Now on the streets or stay up to date online at Tribune242.com.